Most men would rather deny a hard truth than face it. Oh, Tyrion, what you lack in height, you triple in sheer awesomeness. Hey, Silver, look at this new spell I learned. Huh? What the? <laughs> you swap my ends back around this instant, missy. Oh my gosh, that could not sound more awkward. Nah, I like your pony face. And I liked having opposable digits. I suppose I could use that cure-all tonic I've been hearing about. I've heard things about it too. It ain't gonna help ya. Well, I've got an episode to review either way, so I'm a going. I'll just tag along then. I wanna see how bad this'll get. Who's a silly pony? You're a silly pony. Who is you? Is Applejack bumping into gates and knocking over fences? Who is you? Is Applejack? Our story opens with the Apple family enjoying a day at the pond, which is nice after the mixed dynamic in Some Pony to Watch Over Me. I'm surprised Apple Bloom isn't a floating pile of floaties at this point. Good. That's good. Y'all keep not doing that thing you did in that other episode. In fact, the only pony who seems apprehensive is Granny Smith, who launches into a tale of when she was young. Well, I wasn't always this way. Time was, I was an Aqua Pony All-Star. In fact, I was the only apple to ever come close to breaking the Equestria High Diamond Record. Falling six stories into a deep dish pie pan takes a toll on the hindquarters. Why? Nah, old people's stories. Keep them away. Keep them away! I don't understand why they needed to do this. Why attach some old-timey story of an unfulfilled goal that Granny Smith had that had to do with water? Why can't she just be, you know, old? Old people usually can't do a lot of stuff and season 1 Granny Smith seemed very unable to do a lot of things. Saggy old hip anyone? Truth be told, Granny's health has been pretty flexible depending on the script's needs. Sometimes she's spry enough to bunny hop over water cans, other times she's got a case of Charlie horse. The one pony who seems to enjoy the water most is Big Macintosh, and I got a kick out of his fake shark prank. Given that he spent three seasons being a yes-no pony, it's nice to see little hints of more personality for him this season. So now he's a yes-no pony with an occasional chuckle. Great development. I hope it better for Big Mac. In his very first appearance in Apple Book season, he actually spoke, disagreeing with his sister back then still. I want that Big Mac back, but that's around for another day. Anywho, as for the shark joke, lame. Lame! Why does Apple Bloom even fall for it? They're in a pond! Sharks don't live in ponds! Uh, to be fair, Ponyville ponds have a lot of strange creatures, including squids. Me thinks that Fluttershy was a little over-eager in acquiring new friends. Anywho, their trip home is interrupted by a group of injured ponies. <laughs> who apparently didn't respect personal space either. Zombies! Or should I say, anti-zombies! They'll flock to the place that lacks the most brain! And the sound of music leads to the return of the Flim Flam Brothers. With a song and dance that feels like it's trying to be Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000, yet the setup feels more forced. The SSCS6K was a great tribute to movies like The Music Man, which arose from the situation. This one is trying to set up their gimmick, their pitch, and the conflict all at the same time. Now, many fans have complained that Flim and Flam have gone full con ponies with this gimmick, whereas their old machine delivered a real product. So why give that up? My question is, why do we assume that they made this cider machine? They've always had a swindler quality to their characters, so doesn't it seem likely that they con some inventor out of their machine? I can't really argue with you there, since it's headcanon and I have no way to prove or disapprove it, but I personally like to believe that the two are actually brilliant inventors but decided to use their good heads for swindling. And when you have a gullible bunch such as Ponyville, why wouldn't you really? The new pitch is a cure-all tonic, and I do mean cure-all as most Ponyvillians have either wounded limbs, swollen joints, parasprite hat, and what happened to that guy? Seriously, what happened to injure so many ponies? Maybe Devil Rainbow have it for real. Hmm, I have my own theories. So I hear Pinkie Pie's unveiling a new party cannon. Mm-hmm. Supposed to be way more powerful than Cheese Sandwich's party howitzer. Mm-hmm. I've always loved you! Still though, they sure knew exactly where they needed to go, and they all just appeared out of nowhere. One moment the Apple family is alone, and the other they are surrounded by all these ponies. It's like the zombie games. Zombies are slow, but they always manage to catch you by surprise. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, mage, that guy had a cold. He was just asking for a tissue. Well, he got one. <laughs> a ripped tissue. That'll teach him to sneak up on me. And here's where that high diving backstory comes into play. The brothers promise that this tonic will have you feeling young again. Or old. So Granny buys in, and by the next day she's doing the backstroke down a major river and interrupting her grandchildren's fishing. Wait, why are they fishing? Oh, wow. The hatred I feel for this development is great. I can almost feel my insides melt and the flames of rage inside me. Oh, oh, hey, wait, why are they fishing? And Granny seems to be back in shape without any problems. She even manages to creep out her grandson. Uh, no. Right there with you, big guy. Applejack's been a nice voice of reason for the group, as she is for the main six. So she decides it's high time to find out what's in this stuff, which I guess means she'll be taking it to Twilight for study. Nope. Oh, well, then to the Ponyville Hospital. Uh-uh. Poindexter? She goes to ask the Flim Flam brothers. Huh. Well, credit for directness. And as she and Apple Bloom approach, they spy a certain pony who had been cured of crutches the night before. Turns out this guy's part of the act, and the only thing he's suffering is a limited wardrobe. So Applejack tries to have it out with, um... Silver Shill. Yes? No, not Silver Quill, Silver Shill. And I'm surprised they were dumb enough to make him wear the same disguise. What are the chances of a pony from the previous show showing up and seeing the same guy getting cured again? That's such a big risk. Then again, with the intelligence level of Ponyville, I wouldn't worry either, I guess. And here's where we reach the moment that makes or breaks this episode. Flim and Flam intercede, using Granny Smith as an example of how their tonic, which is just apples and beet leaves, dang it, allows ponies to live a happy lie. They're pretty devious in their argument, pinning Applejack between two moral absolutes, honesty versus family. If you're a fan of external conflict, it'll likely be frustrating that Applejack gives in to their line of thinking so easily and doesn't put forth a counter-argument. As a fan of internal conflict, I like that Applejack is so torn between her own personal values and Granny's happiness. It's a nice bit of moral gray in a kid's show, something I admire in Friendship is Magic. I actually like this scene. No, not for the same reasons you do. I like Flim and Flam here. I don't like how the episode portrays them as a whole, but this moment, it's... it's significant. Look how calm they are, how collected and content. They know their plan is working. They know how to manipulate the only pony around who could potentially stop them. They're being good villains here. They're just so calm. Content smiles on their faces. I almost... Maybe even respect them now? Hey, no crushing on the bad guys until I get my beak back. Aw, but look at their confidence! Confidence? Yes. Moderation? No. Flim and Fly make the exact same mistake they made in the cider competition and allow a short-term victory to blind them. As Granny shells out more and more bits for the tonic, and Applejack supports their deception with silence and half-truths, the brothers actually use her as an advertising logo. Now, call me crazy, but pushing the buttons of the one pony who knows your secret doesn't seem like a good idea. Hey, I did limit their awesomeness to that one scene. The brothers before and after are not painted in a respectable light. I have to agree, the whole poster thing was really pushing it. Of course, Granny Smith and Apple Bloom aren't doing much better. It starts out small as the two perform a very well animated swimming sequence. In fact, I was really impressed by how they, Apple Bloom, do not drink water from a public pool. Remember that burning flame of rage aside me? The one that would probably hurt me more than it would you? Yeah, it's getting bigger. It kind of hurts now. Uh, keep me posted, please. The swim meet goes, well, swimmingly, and Apple Bloom and Granny win first prize. Yeah, uh, but mostly it's the tonic. Yes, it's all thanks to chemicals. The truest definition of sportsmanship. And that is where Applejack draws the line. Usually in these stories, one lie leads to another, and it all builds up until it bites the liar, a la Sweet and Elite. Yet here it's just one lie, and how much damage it can do as pony after pony puts forth bits for a fake elixir. Even Silver Not a Quill is going down the dark path. Thanks to you, I realize that sometimes honesty isn't the best policy. So it's time for Applejack to admit the truth, only to be cut short by her own family. I guess the success went to Granny's head as she decides to take on the high dive she failed so long ago. Uh, I'll take it from here. Applejack takes advantage of some plot convenient rope at the tower's top to catch Granny Smith without snapping her in two. And then they hold a conversation as if they were just standing next to each other. That was the most full pony thing I've ever seen any pony do in all my life. I feel like they should be shouting. What? I said, I think, I think they, they should, should be, be shouting. shouting. Like us? Yeah. Come down. 
Give me back my wings! Or I can poof away the ladder and leave you stranded there instead! You wouldn't dare! I am very cross at you! And Applejack gains her rainbow connection as she realizes that a false foundation for belief can't justify a short-term gain. And that's a funny thing about this rainbow connection episode. It's the only one that doesn't feature the other main six, not even at the swim meet. This is focused on the Apple family, while using Granny as an example of how mental hurdles can hold a person back, and belief can motivate them forward. No, that's not a good point. That's the biggest problem with this episode. Mental hurdles keeping you back. Oh, please. Sure, the moral is good, but why do you have to be Granny Smith? Do you know how insulting this is to all the people who have real problems? Old people are affected by their ages, their bodies grow old, and often enough cannot function as well as a young person's. A good fall might be lethal to them or highly damaging. It's not just in their heads, as the episode portrays. They're tackling this thing wrongly. Granny Smith should be gravely injured by now if not dead from all the things she did while feeling better. In your head, one might think they're okay, but your body still has the physical limitations like it did before. If she couldn't hold up Apple Bloom before, she shouldn't be able to now either, not without breaking a bone or two. This is not okay. This is a poor message to people and outright disrespectful to people who have physical limitations due to their age or other reasons. And this stupidity of the pony billions is outstanding. They flock in hordes, most of which with broken bones and various illnesses, yet not one, not one in those few days have ever complained about the tonic not working on them. It took Applejack to give a great big speech for them to realize they were being scammed. If they're that brain dead, let them be scammed, I say. Gravity, you cruel mistress! Okay, let's take a step back here and look at the pros and cons. While I enjoy her character, Granny Smith may ultimately be the wrong example for this kind of moral. Her problems are both mental and physical. It may have been better to have a friend of Applejack struggle with self-confidence and use the tonic as a crutch. Unfortunately, Applejack's link to her family can sometimes be a limitation. The Ponyville residents are indeed gullible, as they have been in past episodes. This is a community that fits the needs of the plot. Oftentimes, they simply go with the brightest, shiniest object. And as we've seen from Princess Luna, they apparently lack a group memory. All these issues have been part of the series, so I'm not sure how much weight we can put into one episode. Yet if there is a silver lining, get it? It's that this reinforces how much the town ponies trust Applejack. Her reputation for honesty lends a lot of weight to her words. And as she apologizes, there's a sense that that reputation has suffered a blow. The town may trust her completely again by the next episode, yet in the here and now, I like how there's a personal consequence that isn't necessarily a punishment. Yeah, but your point rings hollow when you realize that in the same episode the pony villains put the same amount of trust in Flem and Flam, despite having past negative experiences with the two, including Granny Smith, whose issues had been personal. Again, we're at a point of different perspectives. To me, Granny doesn't like them, yet as the only pony who tried their cider, she knows they can put forth a quality product, honest or not. If Flim and Flame were to return for a third time, however, the apples can't fall for their tricks again. Fool them once, shame on you. Fool them twice, shame on them. Fool them three times, and the writers have really botched things up. It's time for Flim and Flam to find new victims. Oh, but I just came up with something. Know how this episode could have been done better? If instead of Granny Smith, Brayburn was the one to be scammed. He'd come to visit Applejack, have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about his troubles, then meet Flim and Flam for the first time and buy into their lies. It'd make more sense, since he doesn't know the two. And Brayburn is an able-bodied pony, and it would make sense that his issues were more in his head than Granny's. And it would make more sense for AJ to not want to tell him the truth, because unlike Granny, who needs to take it easy and be taken care of, Brayburn is an independent member of the non-immediate family. AJ has no say in his life choices, and she should respect his opinion. It all would come together so much better, but no. I like the Brayburn angle, and that would make a lot of sense. Yet, sometimes we have to deal with the episode we have and not the one we imagine. There's still the matter of Silver Shill. Shill feels like a male counterpart to Coco Pamel, who became a fan favorite despite her minor screen time. Part of this is the cuteness factor, yet I think Shill falls short because of how he's presented. Coco was being abused by her employer, which instantly gained some fan sympathy. The Flim Flam brothers never directly talk to Shill. In fact, they protect him from Applejack, so he comes off as cowardly rather than a victim of bad influence. If he were cuter, I'd ship the three. It'd be precious. And isn't it odd how Silver Shill's gift, the key for this episode, is a bit? The other ponies got individual, personalized items, whereas Applejack could lose hers between the sofa cushions. Plus, this conjures all the wrong images for the season finale. If you'd like to continue using your world-saving powers for the next 10 minutes, please insert another bit. All in all... Sweet. This can be a divisive episode depending on where you focus. 
As an Applejack fan, I enjoyed her dilemma and the consequences that came with it. There were logistic issues, yet none of them were big enough to derail the episode for me. Some of these problems have been around since Season 1, and while that doesn't make them right, I've come to accept them as part of the show's package. I won't say this is the best of the Rainbow Connection arc, but I still had fun. This episode felt like a great disappointment for me, myself once being a Flim Flum fan, and it provides me with frustrations from beginning to end. It's not as bad as some of the other episodes in the season, but there were very few things about this one that I could honestly enjoy. Once being a fan, there's still antagonists, which, by the by, I'm glad they didn't have a last minute redemption like other villains. But what happened to your crush? He died along with their dignity at the end of the episode. Are you okay with that? Do you need to see Dr. Wolf? It's okay, I've got a new couple to ship. <sighs> Always with the dudes. All day long you trot around, looking at the apples on the trees, dreaming all your pony dreams, licking lips so greedily. Who's a silly pony? You're a silly pony. Who is you? Is Applejack? Bumping into gates and knocking over fences. 